pretty hard. You know, I, we uh, made the guys run a lot and wanted to see them in a stressful but NBA environment. And to a man, they all handled it pretty well. But uh, it also shows that all the drills and all the stuff they do with their workout guys can't compare to an NBA workout <laughs> and the stress that goes with trying to perform at a high level when you need to. A couple international guys. What do you, what do you, what do you find that you normally need to, tra to transition most mm -hmm. to the NBA? The quickness. Yeah. yeah, it's the physicality and quickness of the NBA game is a bit different. And I don't, I don't think they falter under that pressure. I just think it's different. Uh, there were a couple of defensive drills we did, and uh, Tony was really physical in the drills, and it was almost eye-opening to see the reaction uh, from a USA player to a European player, how that, when they collided, it was normal for Tony. It's just the way he plays, so that might be the difference, but I will say that most of the European guys, um, they work on their skill set a lot more than younger American players. They just have much better footwork, and that may be because of soccer. I'm not sure, but you can see that they, they do have really good footwork and, and good skill set. Money, when it comes to Ken, I mean, we all know he's a pass first point guard that can score, but he compared himself to Rajon Rondo. Is he the kind of point guard needs to be in the right kind of system to be successful in the NBA? In other words, guys around him that can score and, and he's not so dependent on? I think most point guards, for that matter, need to be in the right system. I mean, take the ball out of Nash's hands and make him run Princeton offense, he won't average 10 assists, 11 assists a game. So I, I think it, for most point guards, that's the case. But maybe more so for Kendall because of, you know, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's crafty. Um, and I think being in Carolina where he had three or four first round picks around him, it, it allowed him to be in a system that helped his game. And that's probably what it's going to be like for him in the league, having really good guys around him. So he, he might be a prototype system guy. But I, I think he can play. I think he's got a nose for the, the situation. You know, he sees plays before they happen. He's always talking on the floor. He's competitive. Uh, I put him through some situations where I wanted him to kind of whine a bit. He never peaked at all. He just kept playing. The, um, the convenience, or um, convenience is the right word, of having uh, options at the 10th pick. You bring guys in like this that, that are kind of French top 10 players in the top 20, but you still can look at other guys that are in the top 10. You know all those guys are likely to be there at number 10 when you pick. Talk about the enjoyment of having that for once. Yeah, compared to last year, it's totally different. Um, you get a chance to meet um, some really talented guys and you may not draft those guys now, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. And you kind of build a base, um, an intel base, so you have an understanding of what they can do uh, in your practices, in your system. And then it's just good to meet some of these guys. You know, I don't watch a lot of college basketball, so um, Chicago and these workouts, the first time I've been around them. So right away, you know, the guys who say they're 6'5", you know, when they get next to me, I'm like, 6'2". <laughs> And then you see the thick shoes he has on, and I'm like, okay, that's why you're 6'5". So th those are the things that I can't uh, get a read on when you don't get a chance to meet these guys. But it's good to be in the 10th spot because you get a, a broad range of guys that you get to be around. It's really up, up in the air right now what you guys might decide to do. I think it is just because, like I said before, if one guy slides into the top, in the top five that wasn't supposed to be there or nobody calculated, then that could throw it off. Um, and, and then I, when you're in the 10th spot, one of those guys, maybe the top five guys who were projected to go top five, they might not fall to you, but six, seven, eight, and nine may fall to you. So 10 could be one of those flexible spots. I'm not well versed in the draft as far as how all that stuff works. I kind of listen to Dell and all those guys talk about that stuff. But I think that that's the situation we're in where somebody could fall to us. Or we may just you know, draft a guy who wasn't supposed to go as high, but we think he's pretty good. When he get, get
get a chance to talk to that man about the plan went. Um, just impressions. Um, I know he didn't work out, but you've obviously seen enough to know he probably didn't need to work out. Just your impression of, of him as you get closer to the draft. And, and you can imagine your mind is changing. He's just a bad kid. See him on the streets, walking around, hanging with the wrong crowd. I'm thinking, how, why does everybody like him? And uh, at the end of the day, I'm still trying to figure out why people have him rated so highly. How's that? Very good. Good. <laughs> no, he, 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 Can I no, use that? No. I mean, do what you want. Harold will fix that. <laughs> um, he's just everything that everybody's talked about with having spent some time with him in Chicago and then riding around the city and talking to him um, about his family, my family, uh, you get to know more about him. Uh, you get to know more about him as to what he doesn't say. You know, we were eating with other people and there were times where you didn't even hear a word from him. You just sat there and listened. And um, he seems to have a confidence and an edge about him that's different than the call it the hip-hop generation, but this, this this younger generation that wants to pound their chest all the time. It doesn't seem to have that, but I can tell there's something there that uh, pushes him to, to want to be great, and uh, I'm looking forward in the event that we draft him, looking forward to seeing that come out. Dell seems really adamant about not putting all the pressure on him yeah. to turn the franchise around, saying it's more about Probably, you know, the guards you'd like to resign. You know, I mean, it's that, that's it. it out. I don't think there's any way you can put any pressure on any of these guys. I'm 19 years old to carry an organization. I think around year three, you're going to see Anthony, who he is for the next 10 years. But until then, you're asking for too much. That pressure is on me and the staff to make sure that he develops the right way. Uh, I told him from day one. Wherever he goes, he has to enjoy the game. He's got to get better uh, at an accelerated rate, but he can't go in there thinking he's going to be a savior for any team. Can he have as quick an impact on the franchise as much as Chris did in this time, or is it totally different because of different positions? Chris who? You know, the other guy. Chris Paul? No. I don't think it's totally different. Chris was a point guard. He had the ball in his hands the whole time, so I think it's different. And Chris... Chris had David back then too, and some other vets around him that were more established than these guys. And, and the thing about Chris, you know, the one thing I will say about Chris and Anthony is they both have that whatever it is that you can't explain, they both have it. Uh, and it's the same thing that'll drive you nuts one day, but it'll help you win games, more, more games than not. So I do see that in those two guys. Uh, the desire to win over individual stuff. They both have that, and I think that's a good thing. When you think it's a short term, what do you say is a problem that you, you know, have a natural and on the roster right now? Oh, so yeah, there you go. You're trying to pump fake me. <laughs> I'm not jumping. I'm not jumping. You say power forwards can put it in? I don't know. I mean, Miami just did it. You know, they just won a title. Shane Battier and Haslam with Chris Bosch. So I think, in my opinion, I think you have to have extraordinary wings to do that, have a power forward play inside a lot. And that guy has to have a, a nice post-up game and command a double team uh, at times. But I think it's different for different, I mean, LA won titles with Bynum and Gasol, two twin towers and then Last year, it's Dirk and Mahimi, Dirk and you know, Chandler, I should say. So I think it's different at different times. I, I don't believe there's a prototype. I think the teams who are playing well, they win the championship. Everybody thinks that's the model. The models change, in my opinion. Is it a good to spot you, like he said, kind of, that you have like extra picks? Now. Yeah. You three draft picks. You got a whole lot of salary picks. Yeah. The flexibility. Yeah. You know, shape this roster. Yeah, I think so. I think anytime you have uh, that many picks in a draft like this, you know, I, I still don't think there's a there's a savior in this draft, but I think there's a lot of depth in the draft. 
uh, Bill says it best. He says some of these guys who go six to twelve could be top five picks in other drafts. So if you have three picks, uh, you get a chance to look at some guys that uh, more than likely in a different draft you wouldn't have a chance to get. Thank you, Tom. Right. Thank you guys. Yep.